welcome to Fade In. I'm your host, Caroline Collins, and I am pleased to have in the studio with me today our guest, Laura Irene Young. Hi, Laura. Hello. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I should have told everybody that you are an actor, you're a writer, mm -hmm. you're also a producer. Uh, a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> That's a little, a little, bit, little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but you have your own production company, though, I, don't you? I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, myself and uh, my production partner Amanda Hill, but she lives in Texas. So. Wow. Yes. Well, how do you swing that? Uh, we met in Orlando, Florida. Okay. Um, her passion is she usually does the director of photography stuff and editing. Good. So uh, we do all the pre-production up here, and then she comes up here. We film, and then we send all the film back to her. Oh, so, that's great. And she yeah. edits also? Yes. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Great. So, so you're, you're from here. You live here now. I do. I, I do. always like to do the Pittsburgh angle. This okay. is Carnegie Screenwriters, but mm -hmm. we're a Pittsburgh screenwriting group. Yeah. So I always ask everybody, what what is your Pittsburgh angle? What's your Pittsburgh journey? Uh, oh, um, my, Pittsburgh, <laughs> my Pittsburgh journey uh, grew up here. I grew up in Ambridge, okay. um, which ties in a lot to the movie that we made. Yeah. Um, and then I went to grad school in Savannah, lived in Orlando, Florida for a little bit, and yeah. I just missed this area. I missed my family, and sure. I moved back. So. Oh, that's great. Well, yeah. we're happy to have you back. You've only <laughs> been back a year or so now? Uh, since last July. Yeah, yeah. That, not even a year. Yeah, not even a year that's yet. That's great. Yeah. But you've done a lot. You covered a lot of ground <laughs> in that did. less than a year. Yeah. Huh. Well, tell us, uh, there's so many things I want to talk about. Where do I start? <laughs> I think I'm going to start with the thing that the title is possibly my favorite title of all time. Okay. So this is your one woman show mm -hmm. and tell everyone what it's called. Uh, it's called When Jesus Divorced Me. Of course. Speak straight into the camera for that. <laughs> right. <laughs> you must. Absolutely. Close up. Zoom in on her. Yeah. Um, which I, that just sounds hysterical. So tell yeah. us about, it's a stay, it's a play, correct? Um, it's a one woman show uh, esque sort of comedy routine, storytelling, like it's a little bit of everything. Uh, I don't want to say play because people will think mm. like lights up and scenery and it's really just yeah. me telling my story with a ukulele so <laughs> as, as one does yes so I, <laughs> we'll get back to the ukulele yeah. so let's talk about obviously the title is um there's a story behind that yes tell us about that um so about 10 years ago, I met my ex-husband, and uh, right after we got married, he actually got a job playing Jesus at a theme park. Wow. Um, and during our marriage, uh, actually very quickly, he fell in love with the girl who played Mary Magdalene at the tourist attraction. Ironic. Uh, well, just, I wish I was making that part up. Yes. Uh, but it's really fun. It's a great it's storytelling. It's a great story. <laughs> it is. Perhaps not the best story in your life, yeah. but it's a great story for television. Exactly. And it just... Um, it, uh, for obvious reasons, there were a lot of issues with my faith and self-love that came out of that. Sure. And uh, with that, it took me a few years to kind of figure out how to trust myself and kind of the universe again. Sure. And, um, and And I felt, because it's such an extreme circumstance, like, oh, obviously this only happens to me. This right. is only my story. <laughs> right. uh, but then realizing, like, everyone has something in their life that kind of shakes and rattles their universe, and that it takes true. them time to come back. So that's kind of the the general theme of my show. The is, backstory. I yeah, guess. yeah, yeah, is coming back and figuring it out. And so let's talk about like yeah. how, how does one come back from that? How did you, I mean, not those particular circumstances, which yeah. are definitely unique to you, mm -hmm. but just the whole, um, the whole aspect of being with someone yeah. and having that, you know, come apart and then having mm -hmm. to find yourself again. Um, first off, it takes time. Sure. I think a lot of, I've had a lot of friends that have gotten divorced since then, and I was, I was divorced pretty young, so people come to me and like, oh, Laura, you know, and I always say, uh, let yourself feel what you're feeling, yeah. because I felt like I spent so much time being mad at myself for being sad, or being wow. sad at myself for being angry, Wow. and just feel what you're feeling, because mm -hmm. you'll be able to get past it so quicker because you're not doubling up on the emotions. Um, and then figuring out what you truly wanted to do. So a big part of what I wanted to do was I wanted to make movies. And when I married my ex-husband, that stopped. Oh, wow. Yeah. Why is that, do you think? Um, he was because you still acted, correct? Yes, I don't mean yes. To interrupt, yes. Oh, no, 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 go ahead. Um, 
Yeah, I still acted, um, but I made a lot of concessions. I made a lot of compromises. Um, and I and I wanted to support him because that's what mm -hmm. I thought a good wife did. And that sure. is what it, but it's all about making sure that you're also supporting yourself. Yeah, and that was a lesson that I needed to learn. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, I, th I think it can be easy to sort of lose track of yourself when mm -hmm. you are in any relationship. Yes. Because you do want to nurture that other person, but, mm -hmm. but you're absolutely right. I don't mm -hmm. think you can be a good partner unless you're nurturing yourself as well. Yeah, and, and I love how you said any relationship mm -hmm. because it also goes to like friendships and absolutely. family and even work. Like if you're, you can't be a good um, worker unless you're being good to yourself. Kind you know? of taking care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of self-care did you do? Was that a, is that a journey you want to talk about? First, yeah, no, ask? that's, um, that is a great journey that I'll talk about. Um, so the first thing I did was I, and it's a, it's an ever evolving journey, right? Yeah. So um, figuring out what you actually want to do, like yeah. truly and not with like, oh, well, I've always kind of wanted to do this. What do you truly want to do? That's mm -hmm. a big one. Um, being good to your body. Mm -hmm. I got my yoga teacher training after That's that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I started uh, running um, and therapy and talking yeah. and being honest. I think the yeah. biggest thing is being honest with who you are, what you're going through. Um, and that's hard in today's society with like social media and yeah. stuff like that because we're always putting up a facade yeah. of some kind. Always has to look like a pristine life and yeah. really, or, or really exciting and something that other people might envy whether we intend to or not. And I think we yeah. all put out the best of everything on social media. Yeah, and that's what's, that's what's terrifying in the best way about mm -hmm. my show is that I'm not putting up a facade. Yeah. I'm being extremely honest about a lot of things. Um, and I have to check in with myself going like, okay, are you okay with saying this thing in yeah. front of people you don't know? Yeah. And I think it's time we start doing that. I think it's time we start saying, yeah, I wasn't always a good guy. I wasn't always nice to myself. I wasn't, sure. and just being honest. Yes. Yeah. Because we don't see that a lot today. So do you feel like you wrote it almost as sort of a therapy to get through it and then you ended up with this piece? Or did you intend to write this from the beginning? Um, I... <laughs> I've always thought this is a weird story. <laughs> That's always the first like this is one you, day. You were right about that. Yeah, by the way. yeah. yeah. <laughs> one day. Um, but actually, February first, I was on Instagram like I always do, and I saw like, "Do you want to be a part of Pittsburgh Fringe?" And I, uh -huh. it was like just an advertisement, and I mentioned it to some coworkers, and they, I was like, "Oh, I always thought about it," and I said, "Well, it's this much money to apply." Yeah. And they started, they like secretly met and they started putting money in my Venmo. And they oh, said, you need to do it, you need to do it. That's good friends. It's, they're so wonderful. Oh. Um, and so then I, that day was like, all right. And I started writing February 2nd. And Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and now this thing's going to premiere at Pittsburgh Fringe yes. this year in April. So you started last month. Yes. And it's, it premieres in uh, April 4th. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And where is Pittsburgh Fringe this year? Um, it's on the the east side, east side, right? East end, east side. In a while since east you were back, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. You can tell I just moved back. <laughs> right. um, yeah, but it's it's over there. I'm actually in the Irma Freeman oh, Imagination okay. Center Great. is where my show is. Okay. Yeah. And um, how many shows will you perform? Three. Three. And live, obviously. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so you said it's sort of a... An, you, you talk essentially to the audience. Do mm -hmm. you address the audience directly or do you yep. perform? You do. Yeah. So it's just, it's going to be kind of a conversation. They don't have to talk to me, yeah. but I just. What if I, they want to. What if they want to, like, let's Q&A for a little sure. while. <laughs> but um, but it, it starts, I sing a song um, called Every Divorce Starts Off a Love Story is mm -hmm. my title song. Oh. Uh, and then I say like, yeah, every divorce does. So let me tell you my love story. And I start from when, the day we met until the last day we saw each other. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And you wrote original songs for this also. Yes. Yeah. Which you'll perform on the ukulele. Yes. Which is not, you know, it's not your average instrument here anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's small. <laughs> that's, that's why. <laughs> like, I would love to haul a piano around. Sure. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that will be fun because it's mm -hmm. such a, it's, it's a fun little instrument, actually. Yeah. The sound is, is also fun. So do you mm -hmm. feel like that adds a little levity to the play? 
Yes. The performance? Uh, I don't know what to call it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's hard to describe. Um, it adds levity, uh, mm -hmm. and it it also, but I think, but I think time adds levity to it too. Okay. There's a lot of stuff that if I wrote this six years ago would be a completely different, it would be mm -hmm. all like minor chords and an organ, like it would just be a different show. <laughs> so. It's music jokes, I yeah, think, yeah, for sorry. those of who aren't musicians. Just right. the Phantom of the Opera right. in the background. Right. There you go. Very dark. That's, that's very, yeah, descriptive. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And I could not convince you to bring your ukulele and play some songs for us. No. So if you want to hear these wonderful songs, you're going to have to see the Pittsburgh Fringe Festival in April. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> there is a little plug for you. Oh, thank um, you. I yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about once this is done, mm -hmm. once the you know Fringe is over mm -hmm. and then you still have this wonderful little piece. Do you think you'll perform it elsewhere, or what's your plan? I, I think so. Um, I'm, there's not a definite goal, mm -hmm. um, just because it was so kind of rapid fire, and we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, but I am very proud of it. Yeah. I think it's, it's something that, um, looking into it, I'm like, oh, there were, even though I've only written it a month, I've been writing it the past 10 years, oh, you know? Yes, uh-huh. Um, so I, I'm looking to maybe go to other fringe festivals and and go from there. Perform so, there. Yeah. Interesting. So you are a theater actress. I am, yeah. Have you written for a long time, or is this the first thing that you sat down and wrote? Um, I, uh, mm, <laughs> so I, I've written, <laughs> hmm, I, I've written all my life. Like okay. in fifth grade, I wrote a Sleeping Beauty play that oh. we performed, and like stuff like that. Oh. But I, I was always afraid to say that I was a writer. Mm -hmm. There was a big like kind of fraud complex of like, you're not a writer, you're an actor. Yeah. Uh, and so this past year and a half in trying to figure out what I really want to do, I was like, no, I like writing. I like yeah. telling stories. So Yes, that's really the core of it, I think, no matter yeah. what the, the outlet is, whether it's stage or film or mm -hmm. television, any of that, really the outlet for me also yeah. is, is storytelling. I think that's yeah. what's at the heart of it all. Mm -hmm. So you've told other stories also. Yes. You, you, also, you said you... The one thing that you felt like you really wanted to do was film. Mm -hmm. Was get back into film or to create your own? Um, both. Okay. <laughs> yeah, both with equal go. amount of vigor. <laughs> and so you did. You wrote. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote uh, a movie called Harmony, Harmony. that we filmed in uh, Pittsburgh because we couldn't film it anywhere else because yeah. it's a Pittsburgh-based story uh, about um, the Harmonist Society, which was a religious uh, society back in the 1830s that didn't believe they believed in celibacy so yeah. no uh anything um <laughs> i think you can say sex. yeah okay I think, okay I, I no think, right i, well, we'll I feel weird out. saying I it you can cut that uh, if you can't no whoopee uh <laughs> <laughs> because they believe that christ was coming during their lifetime okay um but there's a story that they don't tell in the museums that is uh the main leader, the religious leader, believed in alchemy, and he would have these experiments in his basement where he thought that he'd have to have a beautiful young virgin with him. Of course. And he had a granddaughter and uh, who was beautiful and obviously uh -huh. a virgin because nobody did anything, yeah. but he didn't choose her. He chose another girl from town. Oh. Uh, and there were a lot of scandals that went around this female because she was very close to this religious leader yeah. um, and a lot of stuff. And so it was, a it was a story that I always wanted to tell. How did um, you first learn of this story? Because I have yeah. been to the Harmony Museum, mm -hmm. and nobody told us that story when I no, was there. No, they don't. You, you, um, know, you dip candles. <laughs> and you, <laughs> you, you get water out of the right, yeah, out of the, the well, pump. Exactly. And, yeah. But nobody mentioned, oh, by the way, our founder was an alchemist. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, my mother worked there most of my oh. life. Yeah. Uh, she was a tour guide there for a very long time. Oh, great. So I would read books on it, and she would tell me... Um, this, that, or the other, just like, just so you know, we don't talk about this, but... Very inside. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I loved the story because it kind of weirdly was a metaphor for um, just how, actually, how I felt about leaving Orlando, Florida. Like, it, wow. yeah, it, it sounds weird, but it, there were a lot of kind of weird parallels about, you know, wanting to be in a place because you felt like it fit, but it didn't fit just right mm -hmm. and, yeah. and all that. So while I was kind of working out if I wanted to move or not, I wrote this movie. <laughs> well, let's let everybody, give yeah. everyone a sneak peek. Let's see the trailer from Harmony, written by my guest, Laura Irene Young. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us 
this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Wow, that looks intense. <laughs> yeah. So this is not a comedy. No, <laughs> this is the opposite. <laughs> this is a uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, suspense is kind of where we're. Okay, so th yeah. thriller, do you think? Um, or No, uh, just drama, like suspenseful drama. I don't want to say okay. thriller because people yeah. think like, ah, and yeah. it's not that. It's okay. more psychological drama, I guess. Well, you said this is a Pittsburgh story, and I guess mm -hmm. we should probably explain for non-Pittsburghers yeah. Yeah. Where you shot this and what, what exactly that is there now? Yeah, um, so the places that we shot actually were uh, Southside Historical Village in Butler. Oh. Is where we shot a lot of so our... So that's not Harmony? Pete? Nope. Oh. Nope. Um, yeah, so we shot there. We shot uh, in a few of the... We did shoot in a few um, of the old Harmonist houses in Ambridge. Okay. Mm -hmm. So any of the interiors you see that are Harmonist yeah. were actual Harmonist interiors, okay. which is pretty cool. That is. Um, but we we have like a general store that we used, a doctor's office and all that, and that was at Southside Historical Village. Wow, no, yeah. where is that? Uh, Butler. Hookstown, I think okay. is the, where it officially is, yeah. That's great, I didn't yeah. know that. Now yeah. I'm gonna have to go out and visit. Yeah, it's yeah. great, it's wonderful. <laughs> so tell us the story. So what, what, who's your lead character? Is it the, the founder of the Harmonist Society? Uh, no, it's actually, uh, her name is Hildegard, who okay. I play in the, in the movie. Um, and she is the other woman who was asked to do experiments with him. Okay. So it's her journey. Um, she starts off being wide-eyed and willing to accept anything this man says mm -hmm. um, because she is, you know, a follower she's of a his. Yeah, yeah, she's a believer. Mm -hmm. And then through, you know, either rumors or people talking or what she's seeing in people that she loves, she's slowly becoming demystified by everything that he says. Okay. Um, now, does that make her leave? You'll have to watch. <laughs> so, yeah. Very interesting. It mm -hmm. sounds it sounds thrilling. Yeah. yeah. In the best possible way. So, yeah. So um, you have told me that you are almost done with it, correct? You're in post yes. on it now? Yes, we are in post. Um, it is uh, right now being color corrected at the same time it's at the composers. Yeah, cool. We got our first draft of the music last night, and it was gorgeous. Oh, um, good. Our composer, his name is Austin McElwain. He's actually in Orlando, Florida. I met him oh. down there. And he is using original harmonist music and altering it to give it the themes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That so. sounds great. Yeah. So you you did say you obviously you wrote it. You do not play Gertrude, but you play Hildegard yes. in this. Mm -hmm. And did you direct it as well? Um yeah, yes and no. So uh, Amanda Hill and I, my production partner. Um, we sat down the day before filming. Uh, we shot it in four days. We could talk about that in a moment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we sat down and we laid out every single shot that we wanted for the entire film and where we were going to put it and in what location. Um, and then I said, you know, hey, I'm going to be behind the camera. So once I'm behind the camera, it's your show. So, um, and then we had um, our assistant director, Brian Keith, uh, came in and he was also kind of there as well as another I. So we all three kind of shared responsibility of director because I didn't want to think that my vision was perfect when I was actually in front of the camera. <laughs> well, I think that's hard, especially mm -hmm. when you write something and you're so intimately involved in it and acting in it as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's a lot of pressure to direct it as mm -hmm. well, but also I feel it's, it's good to have another voice, another opinion, yes. someone else to say, this is how I see it, and yes. you know, you don't always see it that way in your head. Well, and I, I would tell them like, hey, call me out on it. Like, mm -hmm. if I, if I don't look like I'm in the scene, call me out because I would, I was also making sure that our actors were taken care of yes. and like doing all that stuff. So if I wasn't invested, I told them they had to be like, cut, we're doing it again. Yeah. <laughs> so get back here. Stop yeah. being a producer and start acting. Exactly. And did they? Did that have to happen? Oh yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm surrounded with amazingly honest people. That's terrific. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, so four days is really, yes. really short for a, what, it's about almost an hour long. It's an hour, yeah. Yeah, that's not a lot of time to shoot. No. And you, obviously, you just said how many different places that, locations mm -hmm. that you use. So you had several company moves. Yes. And a big cast. Yes. Uh, eight people total in our yeah. cast. So pretty, and pretty crew. big one. Yeah. Um, Organization, like, and I know that sounds silly, but like down to the moment was a big thing and, mm -hmm. and giving ourselves uh, like our leeways of being like, okay, and if we don't get these scenes done this day, it's gonna mm -hmm. be this day. Um, making sure, I, cause I started off as an actor, making sure I didn't waste my actor's time. Good, yeah. So if they were there, they were like, this is the only time you're here and you're cut. Yeah. Um, and just great, I will say the script is good. The actors were phenomenal, yeah. so having having actors show up to set and just like giving it, you only need three takes compared to having people who are kind of in it, yeah. you know? Because mm -hmm. um, then we would do two or three and be like, okay, we got it, we, we can well, move on. Yeah, so. so everyone was really committed to, yes. to your story and obviously they really cared about the project as well. Yes, I, we were so, especially because I wasn't, I didn't know anyone yeah. in this cast because I was, it was when I just moved and wow. we were so lucky. Yeah. So yeah. Did you cast long distance? Like how did you? I did. I was actually um, in Ohio at the time um, working for a musical theater company in Amish country. Oh wow. So I was doing a, a contract out there and whenever it ended I knew I was coming back here and that's when we were going to film. Yeah. So yeah. So you did you have people tape auditions? Or I what did. did you do? Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So we we had them send in uh, headshots and resumes, mm -hmm. and if I you know kind of liked what I was seeing, their headshot and resume and demo reel if they had one, mm -hmm. then I would send them aside and ask them to send me it back, and we just um, just got the best people. We were so excited. Oh, wow. Yeah. And your partner was in Texas at the time? Yes. That's so, complicated. <laughs> yes, it was very, like I said, organization was the key to it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you came up with something really lovely, so oh, I'm anxious you. to see, see the end. And thank when you. you finish, where will it go? What happens? Um, we're going to do a round of film festivals, probably for about a year. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have a local screening just for everyone who's ever been mm -hmm. involved. Friends. Yeah, family yeah. friends. Um, and people from like the museums want to see it. So um, Harmony, sure. Old yeah. Economy. Village, they yeah. they want to see it, um, and then yeah, we'll see. See we'll, what happens. Yeah, we'll yeah. see from there. <laughs> <laughs> so after that, then what? What what's next for you? I would love to write a romance that is not uh, ironic because ah. right now, <laughs> like my stuff is pretty like either dark or or here's what I think about love. Um, <laughs> so I'd like to write because I do believe romance exists and I believe love exists. So kind of shifting gears yeah. and. And doing that. So. Do you think you came to this point because of everything that you went to went through? Y yes, I. Oh yes. Or in spite of? No, no. I think I think I. Um, and this is in my show. I love who I am now. Right. I, I like how strong I am, and that sounds very selfish to say, but I'm okay no. being selfish. Yeah. Um, and I look back about at who I was when I met my ex-husband, and I kind of, that's not my favorite person. Mm. That's not a good version of me. It was yeah. um, a different version of me. Mm -hmm. And so I would rather meet someone in this version of me yeah. and find that, like that's the person I want to meet than, you know. Um, so I always, you know, I think, I think true love exists and the old fairy tales like, oh, the, you have to slay the dragon for true love. And it's like, well, maybe the dragon's your ex-husband. Like, <laughs> maybe you have to get married and divorced. So you slayed him. Yeah, yeah. And it, <laughs> no, that got slayed. And it, now, it, yeah. Not really him. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that metaphor. And then the prince will show up. So how does he feel about this? And is Mary Magdalene still in the picture? Uh, she is not. Uh. Um, because, you know, that's not a good way to start a relationship. Um, <laughs> and he and I ended in great friendship. So okay. that's another thing is that we, we truly, we, we did love each other. And that's another thing is that like the love doesn't, there's a big lie that it's like, oh, you'll get over him and you'll stop loving him. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, I loved him. I'll always love him. Yeah. Um, but it changes and it evolves. And sure. so when he still lives in uh, Florida, mm -hmm. And so when I left, we had a nice conversation and we talked. And then when this, and we haven't talked since, and then when this started, 
um, I was like, hey, just so you know. Uh, I mentioned. Yeah, I just wanted to. A um, couple hundred people are going to come and hear. Yeah, but he did a friend show about his side a long time ago, oh. too. So, so. Well, that's very interesting. Is that, yeah. do you think, part of what prompted you to want to do this particular story for the Fringe? Um, I think it allowed me to okay. because oh, I felt like, sense. yeah, mm -hmm. I felt like, oh, I'm allowed to do this right? because, because he did. Yeah, um, the story has been told. Yes. But not from your perspective. Exactly. Yeah. And he, he's, um, yeah, and he's a great guy. He obviously made mistakes um, and he's happily married, which okay. is great. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Has, yeah. has he, did you send him the script or has he seen? No, I did tell him that I would send him uh, the film, like once I once I record it yeah. on stage, yeah. that and he said he would love to see it. So I'm sure he would. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure he would. Well, you have to come back when you yeah. you know when you've taped that, and mm -hmm. so we can show some of that That'd as be well. Great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so other projects on the horizon right now beyond the fringe, or can you not see beyond April? Um, actually, if you really want to know, Carrie, I do want to know. Uh, well, tell us all. We are filming two short films on Saturday. Wow. Yeah. So, like you, organization. And you understand that people do take weeks and, you know, sometimes even months to film things. I, yes, I do. I do. Um, but we just, I just like having, f I, we, we like making the stories. So it's the better the, and we're using a lot of the same actors, so I know they're going to be good. Oh. Um, so, yeah. Well, yeah. you, so you, you've created, I think this might be your, um, I don't know, your, <laughs> <laughs> the theme of your production company is that is uh, organization. Well. Yes, yes. Uh, and maybe the, what is it? Magic feather. Magic feather. Magic yes. Feather. I think it needs um, to be organized feather. That organized. Is just, you know, you don't have <laughs> no to magic. use that. It's really, it's just a suggestion. Excel like, spreadsheet feather. Right. Uh, nice. Yeah. yeah it, really, it has exactly <laughs> the same ring to it. Yeah. <laughs> well, so. Laura, thank you so much for talking with me today. Yes, I really for enjoyed me. talking with you. I enjoyed seeing your project. I cannot thank wait you. to see the the final. Um, the, the final project of both, actually. Oh, thank so, you. I'm I excited. wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. And you'll come back and join us. Yes, of again. course. All right, terrific. <laughs> and thank you for joining us as well. This has been Fade In. I'm Caroline Collins, and I hope you'll join us again. Thank you. Mm -hmm.